The Tandy Color computers have an analog joystick input for two joysticks, and these analog joysticks will give out a voltage somewhere between 0 to 5 volts, indicating where you are along the X axis position or the Y, or in between. So then there's a button which is just digital 5 volts ground. And the problem with this, some things, some games, really want you to be, for example, specifically in the center along the X if you're going to go up or down on the Y. For example, if you're a character in a game walking horizontally and you need to suddenly go up a ladder, if you're slightly off center, it may not respond until you go precisely. So it's kind of hard to play those kind of games. Those are better suited to digital joysticks, like the original Nintendo kind, where up and down are just digital 5 volts ground. So, I recently made this PCB here, which allows plugging in the Nintendo gamepad, and this plugs into this board, and it provides an output between 0 and 5 volts, representing which button is currently pressed or released. I'd like to take this and then find a way to adapt it so I can have a digital joystick, if I want, on the color computer or go back to this analog when needed. So I have a couple of color computer reference books here. And the first thing I want to do is look up this joystick circuit. So the joystick is basically 200K pots, one for the X axis and one for the Y axis. So when you move along here, you're controlling one pot and this way is the other pot. And the joystick gets five volts and ground from the Coco, puts five volts on one end of each pot and ground on the other end. And then the wiper goes to the X and the Y axis input on the Coco, so those go to analog to digital converters, and based on the resulting numbers, we can tell if you're toward the 5 volt or ground side on each axis, and you can figure out where you're positioned. And for the fire button, it's just a button to ground when it's being pressed. And to test the joystick, here's a basic program. So we can read in these variables joystick 0 and 1 for the x and y axis on one of the two joysticks, and 2 and 3 is the other one. And to get the status of the button, we can look at this certain register and print all of this out. Then we can move the joystick around, press the button, and see if things are responding. And it says here, when those analog joystick inputs are read between 0 and approximately 5 volts, the resulting analog to digital reading goes between 0 and 63. So one of these is going to be the extreme side and the other is the other side. And therefore somewhere in the center should be maybe just over 30 because that's halfway in the range. I came up with a circuit that should do this. And after a little breadboard testing, I made a PCB with today's sponsor, PCB Way. So the goal is to have a PCB that generates simulated analog joystick output signals on a header. And I made this cable so it can plug into the back of the Coco as if it were an analog joystick. The way I'm doing that, I'm using a 4066 chip, which has four single pole, single throw switches that are digitally controlled with five volts or ground when I'm powered from five volts. So I'm providing 5 volt power to this board. Then I have digital signals here that represent up, down, left, right directions and a button. There's actually two buttons here because this can be used for other things as well. So if a button is pressed, I'm just passing this straight on to the output because we don't need to do any analog converting on that. It's just the original signal or the signal being grounded. So it's going to come in here ready to go to the actual joystick port. But for the X and Y axis on the analog joystick, we need to give this one of three voltages, somewhere around halfway 0 to 5 volts at around 2.5 when we're not pressing it, or 
depending if we're pressing it up or down, or if we're pressing it left or right, each axis has to change between around 2.5 going toward zero or going toward five volts or whatever VCC actually is. So that's basically accomplished with a voltage divider for the X and for the Y axis. When these control inputs are logic high, the corresponding single pole, single throw switch is closed. So a circuit path is made. So by default, if nothing is happening on here, all of these control inputs for the up, down, left, right are pulled high. So all four of these switch contacts are closed. And so this X axis voltage is coming from the midpoint of a resistor to five volts and an equal value resistor to ground. So when nothing is happening, the X axis should be seeing around 2.5 volts and be considered as an analog joystick perfectly in the center horizontally. We want the same vertically to have this completely in the center when idle. So the Y axis is also a voltage created by equal value resistors to five volts and ground. So when nothing is pressed, we should get around 2.5 volts on the Y axis. As soon as we press one of these up, down, or left, right buttons, we are grounding one or more of these control inputs. So we are opening the contacts on one of these pull up or pull down resistors on each side. So if we're pressing up on this Nintendo controller, this up channel is going to be grounded. So that's channel C. So that means these switch contacts are now open and all we have is a pull down resistor going through this other switch, giving a ground on the Y axis. So zero volts means we're pressing the up button. If we release the up button and press the down button, that's control D. This switch here opens up. So now we have a resistor pulling to five volts through these closed contacts going to the Y axis output. So five volts on the Y axis means we're going in the down direction and so on. And the five volt power supply for these resistors for the analog joystick emulator is coming specifically from this Coco joystick port. I'm not using the five volts from here so that this can actually mimic the real analog joystick where it's just a potentiometer, another potentiometer, five volts and ground from the computer and then push button to ground and we don't introduce any other anomalies. There's the resulting PCB. We've got our resistors here for the pull-ups as well as the voltage dividers for the analog joystick, the 4066 switch, five volt input, digital inputs for the up, down, left, right and a couple of buttons, and then the output analog version of those X and Y signals to go to the color computer. So let's hook that up and just see how it's running. I'm using this Arduino Nano just to get five volts of USB power over here. And I'm also using five volts on here as the analog joystick five volts since it's not plugged into a Coco. So then I have a ground wire coming from there to simulate pressing a button. The voltmeter is on the X axis and with nothing being pressed, it should be close to halfway between zero and five and it's around 2.4 volts. So that's good. Now, if I press the left button by grounding it, I get around zero volts out. If I press the right button, I get 4.78 volts, which is about the VCC on here anyway. It's not exactly five. So then I release and we get 2.4 volts center joystick again. Moving over to the Y axis now and getting things stable around 2.4 volts. So if I press the up button, I get basically 14 millivolts. That's ground. If I press the down button, 4.77. So that's close to five. So it looks like I'm converting my digital zero and five volt inputs to analog voltage outputs only representing the extreme ends of travel of an analog joystick or completely center on the X and Y. That should allow me to play games that are sensitive to only having one direction pressed at a time. So let's hook all of this up and test it out. 
I'll need to take this Nintendo controller, plug it into this adapter to go to this board here to convert those Nintendo signals into up, down, left, right, etc. Plug those into here and convert that to a Coco friendly analog joystick signal. The Nintendo controller is plugged into this board here, which decodes the buttons as dedicated output logic signals. Those, along with 5 volt power, going to the analog joystick emulator. So when we press up, down, left, right, or the B button, it will translate the directions into analog voltages, as well as the digital button, and that will go out to this analog joystick cable that I'm going to plug into the Coco. So I should be able to use the Nintendo controller. Here's the basic program to read in the X and Y axis and look at the button state and print those out on the screen and just keep repeating. So with nothing pressed, the button says 255. If I press the button, it will change to 254. And the X and Y axis both say 31, which is halfway in the range with nothing pressed. So if I press up on Y, I should get zero. And left on X should be zero. Now the button changes as well, but I guess software knows how to decode that. If I go down or right, I should get the 63 maximum numbers. And of course, if I go diagonal, I can get 63 or zero on both of them or on one or the other. So we should be able to play a game now. And there's my favorite game. So if I press a button to start, I can go left and right. I can jump and I can get killed. Oh, so. Going up the ladders now is way easier than with the analog joystick. I've never gotten this far in the game. I don't know what I'm supposed to do though. Never mind. <laughs> 